Welcome to another Inside Evo. We've got something a little bit different this time because we're going to be talking about a film. The film that is probably the cinematic event of the season if you're somebody who loves cars. We're talking about Rush, of course. Uh, the film that tells the story of the rivalry between James Hunt and Nicky Lauda in the 1970s. Now, I haven't actually seen this film yet, but uh, our editor, Nick Trott, was the lucky man who got to go along to the premiere last night. Um, and so he's going to tell us a little bit about it. First and foremost, I suppose, um, was it convincing? You're somebody who obviously loves films, but you also love 1970s racing at quite oh, a geeky yes. level. Oh, yes, yes. Were you convinced by the story? Yes, didn't go to the premiere though. I'm not that important. I went, oh. to, I went to the screening, the McLaren screening, which was a great event actually. McLaren um, put a screening on in, in, in London and uh, yeah, they, they arranged a 12C convoy, which was pretty cool. So I um, obviously run the 12C on, the, on Fast Fleet, so I took the car down there. But yeah, sadly not um, high profile enough to attend the uh, premiere. I'm sure your ticket just got lost in the post. Probably, yeah. Harry probably got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah obviously. Gets the, all the good ones. Uh, it was, uh, fundamentally it was a great film, you're absolutely right, I'm a, I'm a complete F1 uh, geek, um, in particular the 70s era, I kind of hero worshipped the uh, big 70s motorsport stars, Barry Sheen was probably my first motorsport hero, James Hunt, Evil Knievel as well, but anyway we won't, we won't go there. Um, the film was actually very convincing, um, I know there's been a lot of reports about um, how accurate the story was, but um, it, it did a really great job I feel of representing um, Formula One in that era and it was kind of it was shocking in places as well because obviously the, the sport wasn't safe it's well documented how unsafe Formula One was probably until the early 90s um, and um, driving seemed to be probably 10% of actually what happened in Formula One those days the rest of it was mainly shagging and uh, political stories so, <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it was an enjoy it's an enjoyable film. I certainly enjoyed it, um, and some of the character portrayals, I mean, particularly Nicky Lauda, um, Daniel Brawl, astonishing performance. I, was, I mean, obviously, the next question is, is the leads. Did they convince you? Were you able to sort of suspend disbelief and believe that you were looking at James Hunt, Nicky Lauda? Yeah, good question. Uh, Fifty fifty. The Daniel Brawl's Nicky Lauda was so good kind of goosebumps you know it, it was extraordinary performance there were there were times um in particular when he was in race mode so he had the balaclava on and the crash helmet on and you could, the, the way his face was and the makeup after the burn it was pretty spooky you know i've, I've been lucky i've met nicky Lauda a couple of times sorry for the name dropping but i think that really you know that that allowed me to sort of i suppose analyze brawl's performance and Faultless, absolutely. If even if you're not into motor racing and you're not into Formula One, it's worth watching Rush for for Daniel Brawl's performance. Um, on the other side, Chris Hemsworth. What what was Chris Hemsworth best known for? Was it Thor? Thor. Thor. Yeah. Right. So Thor and James Hunt, two very different. Very different, and he's Australian yeah. as well, isn't he's he? He's Australian. He does the accent pretty well. I mean, it's not too plummy. It's not you know, it's not too public schoolboy, but it's just just enough. Um, if, he, he's a physical presence. Um, he's you know he's a real beefcake stack kind of guy. So that's quite difficult. Hunt was very uh, wiry. He was a, he was uh, a runner, athlete. You know I, I know people talk about him being a bit of a drinker and everything else, but he was a very fit guy and very wiry. Um, Hemsworth is stacked. You know he's really big. So that's really tough. But I also think that he he almost had an impossible job as well because Hunt was a very very complex individual. I think. Um, uh, you know, as I mentioned, everybody knows about his uh, his drinking and his, his womanising and you know rumours of drug use and everything like that. And uh, and then in his later life, I think um, some of the people that were close to him, you know, they said that he'd suffered from depression for many years. He was certainly um, he was certainly a very anxious guy. And Ron Howard, the director, played on that a little bit. You know, he's the Hunt used to um, throw up you know before races and the team used to say we don't mind that because it means he's really you know he's g'd up for the for the fight um so Hemsworth's performance isn't isn't so convincing um but Daniel Brawl astonishing um he's very good Brawl at playing characters who you don't really want to like but you kind of warm to them you know this beyond lovable rogue. I mean, if you've seen Inglorious Bastards, there's no way you should kind of empathise with that character at all, but you kind of do. Um, and he's, he's brilliant at that. Um, the film plays up 
the the rivalry it gets borderline hatred and that wasn't necessarily what happened in that season the guys didn't hate each other at all I don't think there was any hatred then I think the guys knew that they were in an extremely dangerous uh, sport and um, camaraderie was was more important than um, the, the hatred kind of thing so um, so that was overplayed in a typical Hollywood way um, now, the thing I really want to ask, so the obviously from an Evo point of view, mm. um, the thing that we're, we're most keen about is the race and the authenticity of the racing. Yeah. Yeah. Do they do that thing that almost all films do, that when somebody's going for the overtake, they just change down one more gear? Because, of course, yeah. you can obviously do that in a Formula One car. Yeah, yeah, from, from Herbie to, like, Sylvester yeah. Stallone's horrendous champ car film, whatever that was. Yeah, cars seem to have, like, 27 gears, don't they? You know, I think even in Bullet, the great car chase scene, I'm sure Stephen Queen changes up about 20 times, you know. So, um, sadly, yes, you know, there, there right. are, yeah, there are very odd, you know, if you want to overtake, just push the throttle a little bit harder. As if they're not driving flat out anyway. You know? So, and there are some odd angles when in the race scenes as well. There's an angle in the car, which is a very unnatural sort of angle. I'd like to see more from, see more from the kind of driver's perspective. The CGI is relatively well done. Um, the the most difficult thing, and this is in, this is entirely, the, the only people that are going to sense this are people that know a lot about racing. So I was watching it and going that's Cadwell Park, that's Brands Hatch, you know, and then you, you see a section where they go and doing Druids in reverse or something like that, and it's supposed to be the Nürburgring. And I was watching the film going, please just try and suspend that bit of reality and just accept that, you know, that this is what they're doing. And also the actual action sequences with the cars were just a little bit, the cars were too slow, you know. Mm. They, they, they tried to exaggerate the speed of the car with kind of, uh, with the way that they used the camera, but the, the cars didn't really look like they were traveling very, very fast. Um, also, I think they saved all of the CGI and the kind of um, the best sequences for the crash, you yeah. know, the louder crash. That was superb, really well done. I think it's a well documented, you can see it on YouTube. Um, it's a hor horrendous crash, but the way that the car spins around and catches fire, and then I think, was it Brett Lunger, one of the guys crashed into him and they were pulling him out of the car. From that moment on, the film is absolutely dominated by Daniel Brawl's um, portrayal. Um, the hospital scene where he's recovering, he's given the last rites, you know. Again, these are all well-documented things, but, but Ron Howard does a very, very good job of, um, uh, of, of, of really expressing that horrendous time. And actually, when I was watching the film, I realised, you know, we've all been talking about James Hunt in relation to Rush, and um, I think the film's about Nicky Lauder. I mean, extraordinary man, triple world champion, nearly won the championship, um, after the horrendous crash, he, he, went, he went away from the scene, he came back and then he won another championship. You know, Nick, Nicky Loud is a, an astonishing man and I think actually the film's about him. It's not so much about Hunt, you know, so um, it's a fascinating, really fascinating film. It's not as good as Apollo 13 in terms of a, you know, it doesn't feel quite the historical document that Apollo 13 Well, that was actually is. my last question because in terms of, um, you know, obviously this is, this is Evo, not total film, but... <laughs> Um, you know, you've somebody seen a lot of films. Yeah. Should where, how does this compare to the other Ron Howard films? The most famous ones, obviously Apollo Thirteen. Do you see mm. bits of that in it? He's he's yeah. been described as a very old-fashioned director. Sometimes does this yeah. feel like a an old-fashioned film in terms of the way it's put together? It's very good storytelling. There's no doubt the script is very good. Um, I think that he was the right person to do this film, and it's far superior to every motor racing film that, that's ever been made. Um, there's more reliance on the script than you'd expect. I, I thought there would probably be a little bit more crash bang wallop kind of stuff, but actually the script is really well done. And the interplay between Louder and Hunt, you know, those, those moments when they have, when they're alone. There's a great scene at the end of the film. We probably should have given a spoiler alert at the beginning. Yeah, spoiler alert here. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert coming towards the end. Great scene at the end of the film where Hunt's won the championship uh, and Louder's um, he, he, he hooks up with Lauder in a, in a hangar at an airport and Lauder's walking around a private jet. And of course, if you know about motor racing, you know that that was the next chapter in Lauder's life. He, he ran Lauder Air, he became a commercial airline pilot. And that was really interesting. And Hunt talk, you know, Hunt's surrounded by girls, he's gonna jump on a Learjet and everything like that. And Lauder's just inspecting this Learjet and he talks about the discipline of flying and how Hunt would benefit from learning to fly because it would introduce some discipline in his life. And it was really, really well done, that, that scene. And um, I think 
I think that they're the best moments, the interplay between those, those two characters. And there's a very touching moment, spoiler alert again, at the end of the film where you actually see um, Louder in later life and you see a little bit of Hunt as well. And that again is a bit of a goosebump kind of moment because of course Hunt's no longer with us and he died way too, way too young. Um, fascinating, it deserves, it deserves the hype. Mm. You know, it's a very strong film, it's great storytelling. Um, and it's out on September the 13th, I believe. So Mike, I should probably get all the team together, shouldn't I? We should have a film night. Definitely. Should we do that? Definitely. On expenses? On expenses, definitely. Yeah, no popcorn. Just Final question, I mean, it, yeah. even if you're not putting it on expenses, um, <laughs> is, it, is it worth, would you go back again? Is yeah, it worth it? Yeah, I think I would. Yeah, I think I, think I would. Um, it's not one where you're going to wait for the Blu-ray or anything like that. You, you, you want the full experience of the cinema. Actually, that's a good point. Um, I, I, I would recommend that um, Evo TV uh, subscribers and, and viewers go to the big screen and watch the film. Um, the, the main reason, I know this sounds really geeky, but you've got to hear a Ford Cosworth DFV in surround sound in a cinema at top volume. It is... <laughs> It's out of this world. They model the sound very well, actually. That's that's really even even when Louder's in the V12, mm -hmm. um, or was it flat 12? I can't remember what it was there. Yeah, the sound effects are beautifully done. I don't know who who was the sound recordist, but it's not the easiest job, is it, to kind of <laughs> sound record a Formula One car? Um, I would go and see it again. I'd like to see it again because also because I say that the, the script is 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 well done. It's quite intricate. There's probably a few things I've missed in the script. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll go, and my wife wants to see it. Probably because Chris Helms Helmsworth so stacked. And... Well, there you go. Something for absolutely everyone. A <laughs> uh, little bit different from Inside Evo, but I uh, hope you've enjoyed yeah. it. seen it let us know what you think share your uh, thoughts in the comments below and finally if you want to uh, something a little bit uh, of extra content we've got an interview with uh, James Hunt's son Tom uh, in the latest issue of Evo this was actually on the newsstand for another week uh, this is the subscriber copy which you get by subscribing uh, so issue 189 of uh, Evo you'll be able to read that interview as well keep watching and uh, we'll see you next time